So as we move into the late fall and early winter season of the year, this is a very critical time period for our cow-calf producers to be thinking about their nutritional program for their herds and what steps and changes they may want to implement over the next several months. Of course, this is a very critical time of the year for, for both spring and fall calving cow herds, uh, but, but the season of, of calving that we have uh, within those particular herds is certainly going to impact uh, our nutritional strategy and our, and our plan that we want to implement uh, for those particular herds going forward. As we go into the third trimester for our spring calving cow herds, that's a really critical time period because we know that that is really the last opportunity that we can economically add body condition score uh, to, those, to those cows prior to calving. And, and, on, and at, the, at the same time as well too for our fall calving cow herds uh, as we go into this time of the year, uh, we know that that is a very uh, a critical time because we may be either close to peak lactation or, or, or just past our, our peak lactation depending on when those cows would have calved this past fall. And so uh, we want to be thinking about maintaining body condition on those cows as we go through uh, the, the fall and, and the win as we go through the late fall and the winter months and, and, um, and making sure that we're accounting for the needs of the calf and, and, and not letting those cows get to the point where they're losing so much body condition uh, that we start to run into losses with, with pregnancies as well too. This year particularly, uh, we may have a, a higher rate of cows or a greater number of cows uh, that are coming into the winter uh, season in a, in a thinner body condition score than what we would typically uh, see just due to the severe drought conditions that we've had throughout uh, the state and, and other regions of, uh, in other regions, other surrounding regions this past year. Uh, and, and so this is really a, a key time to really take a hard look at those cows and be evaluating those cows uh, for body condition score. And, and, and at the same time too, if you have the opportunity uh, to bring those cows through the chute, if you're, if you're doing fall uh, pregnancy work, if, if doing fall animal health work and processing, and you can, you can palpate those cows for body condition, uh, that can also give you a, a nice uh, guide or, or can be very helpful when you're trying to determine uh, the body condition score status of those particular cows. Uh, because sometimes when we get into uh, the early winter months and those cows have started to add a hair coat, they can be deceiving. And so sometimes if we can do some, some manual palpation and put our hands on those cows, that can help confirm uh, what we may or may not be seeing with our eyes and making sure that we're managing those cows appropriately. Uh, one thing that we always want to consider and, and think about doing is, is strategically sorting those cows by age and, and body condition score. And, and, and usually if we just simply sort cows by age and if producers can do that, uh, that, is, that is a nice, uh, that, that is a, a good strategy, a good approach, uh, because if we sort those, those younger cows together, those two, three and four year old cows that we know have increased requirements because they still have a, uh, still have a, a, a requirement for growth, uh, we know that, that typically, not always, but typically body condition score will kind of follow with those cows and so that allows us to do some strategic supplementation uh, with, with those groups as well too. The other thing that we, that we want to be thinking about as we go into this time of year, of course we know that, it's, that, that uh, feed prices are, are high relative to what they've been over the last, uh, relative to what they've been over the last couple of years, so we're dealing with elevated feed prices. But we really just want to be thinking about implementing more of a strategic supplementation program to help mitigate some of those challenges that we're seeing with higher feed costs. And so if, if, we, if we can evaluate a set of cows and we know that, okay, if we've got a set of cows that are, that are maybe in a body condition score three or a four, uh, if they're spring calving cows and we want to make some change on them prior to calving, uh, which of course is the, the most optimal time for us to be able to do so, we can, we can look at that and look at our feedstuffs, look at our forage quality, evaluate our supplements that we have available to be able to use on a cost per unit of nutrient basis, and make some key strategic decisions about supplementation rate and, and, uh, and, what, and understanding how that's gonna impact what our cost situation is gonna be. But if we can do that, that's gonna allow us to more accurately uh, target our supplementation program and at the end of the day, that's gonna be a more economical and, and uh, more effective approach for us to be able to do and, and implement this year, which is very important where we have higher uh, supplementation, higher supplement costs, higher feed costs, higher feed costs and hay costs all across the board. A important consideration this year 
though we've maybe had more so this year than we've had in years past that has certainly uh, been on the minds of, of many of us within the extension community as well as our veterinarians around the state is, is what, are, what is the storage situation like or the store, storage status like uh, for our cows in regards to vitamin A and what their ability would be to be able to transfer that vitamin A through colostrum uh, to their calves as we go into the spring. Uh, the reason for that this year is because, because certainly with, where we've been dealing with a more challenging situation uh, with regards to drought and, and pastures that have decreased uh, beta carotene content and, and cattle that are out on forages with, de with decreased content. Uh, our, our concern is, is that we may have a greater proportion of cows this year uh, that are gonna have a, that are gonna have a lower, lowered status uh, or a more deficient status of, of vitamin A stores. And, and so the challenge is that we fear that there may be uh, a greater, greater risk of, of calves this year not being able to receive adequate, uh, adequate supplies of vitamin A through colostrum. And so uh, this year particularly, we certainly want producers to be thinking about uh, the vitamin A levels that they're providing uh, to their cow herds uh, in, in their supplementation programs, either through a commercial supplement or often uh, through a free choice mineral supplement or a mineral package that we're feeding. Uh, but it's really important for producers this year, especially uh, to be under, understanding the levels that you're feeding, look at your feed tags and, and understand how much you're, you're providing those animals and, and, and be thinking about uh, and, and be thinking about if, if we need to be offering a higher level than what we potentially have been in the past and, and making sure that we're, uh, that we're taking a proactive approach with, with looking at that. So very critical time period of the year with, with regards to many different factors uh, for our cow herd nutrition programs. Uh, the key this year is that we've got extremely high feed prices for all feed commodities and hay, hay and forages as well. And so we really wanna be thinking about just taking a proactive approach for more information on beef cattle nutrition and information on helping develop more, more effective supplementation programs, feel free to visit our website, ksubeef.org, or contact your local agent or area beef specialist.